we're going to be in the book of Ephesians. Familiar scripture that we're all familiar with. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 14. Preparing for spiritual warfare. Preparing for spiritual warfare. Again, as I shared this this morning, let the Holy Spirit work. Because I'm not as prepared as I normally like to be. But therefore, the Lord can work more. Less of me, more of Him. Reading from verses 10 to 14 of chapter 6. And boy, are we in a spiritual war in this world. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts this morning as we look at your word, Father. Father, I pray that you would fill each person in this room with your spirit. I pray if there be one here today that who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they would not leave this auditorium without that understanding, Father. Father, I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, that everything that I share comes from you, Father. Help us, Lord, to apply what we read and learn to our own personal selves. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Here. Believers <laughs> are in a spiritual battle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And boy, is that the truth. It's a spiritual battle out there today. By every way possible, Satan seeks to hinder and steal, but he cannot steal our salvation, but he wants to hinder our lives. <clears throat> the devil would like to make us miserable and ineffective, Christians here on earth, and cheat us out of heavenly rewards. And again, you know, I can really relate to that because as we're not feeling 100%, we see that the devil can really try to work. Work you. You're useless. Can't use you anymore. Time to get somebody else. This is what the enemy puts in, in your mind there. But we have to know the greater is he that's in us Amen. than he that's in this world. <clears throat> But Satan's job is to make us miserable and ineffective Christians here on earth and cheat us out of heavenly rewards. How can we avoid falling prey to Satan's destruction and plans? According to Ephesians 6, we, are, we aren't called to fight the fight by ourselves. We cannot fight the enemy. Amen. He's much more powerful than we are. We need the Lord to fight for us. We aren't called to fight the devil. Instead, we resist by standing firm in the power of the Lord through Christ. Believers can overcome temptation and even facing different trials and circumstances, knowing God is in control. That's the biggest thing, knowing God's in control. A lot of times, everyone, we don't understand what's going on. We, as I share many times, we look at situations and circumstances. We look at the now. Like even Angela's sharing with me, you know. What's your favorite verse? Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. He's taken what I'm going through, what all of us are going through, not to harm us, but to make something good out of it. 
It's through the trials and the hard times where we learn. And what God's really teaching me is dependence. It's time to practice what I preach. You know, it's one thing to stand up and preach it, but do you really live it? It's easy to remember, and I always share this, to look at the Bible as just a book, a textbook, but it's alive. And it's through our trials that we're tested. And I believe that even with my situation, God wants to grow me up more so I can be used more by Him. Amen. And you can't if everything's going good. You're less dependent. See, so, God allows Satan. I'm not saying, you know, the enemy gave me a bad back or what have you there, but Satan's out there to deceive, to, to uh, you know, God allows certain things. Like you read the book of Job and how he allowed, you know, Satan, <coughs> God allowed Satan to put Job to the test. But we have to realize we got to focus on the Lord, not on the situation. <clears throat> In Ephesians 6, 10 to 13, Paul encourages us. I just want to look at this again. <coughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I like that verse. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of him. Not in the power of myself, not in the power of yourself, in the power that he has. What's that verse, Philippians 4, 13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not through myself. Then he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And he says, therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. He encourages us with this. What is the nature of the battle? Of our battle against Satan? It's spiritual. Our battle is spiritual. Paul isn't talking about physical armor. He speaks of sport, forces of wickedness in heavenly places. We need to understand, praise God for this, our current bodies are temporary. Amen. This is temporary. I always share that. This is temporary. But our spirit lasts forever. <clears throat> Through our spirit, we relate to God. You go back in the book of John when Jesus was talking to the woman in the well, what did he say? We worship God in spirit. John 4, 24. Satan can't change our eternal de destiny, but he can do all that he can try to do to interfere in our relationship with God. While on the earth, throwing us away, making us unhappy and spiritual unproductive. That's his main goal. Satan's main goal is to keep us down, to keep us depressed, to keep us not walking with the Lord so that we can become ineffective for the kingdom. He can't steal your salvation, but he can keep you from growing in your walk. He can keep you so beaten down that you have no desire to share what Christ is doing in your life. Amen. That's his goal. And if he can do that, you know what, everyone? He feels he's winning the battle. He feels he's winning the battle. But see, we have to remember, as I share, greater seed, it's what? In us. We have the power through the Holy Spirit. Personal attacks out here. Paul says our struggles is not against flesh and blood. Struggle here also means wrestle. The word wrestle indicates one-on-one. -on -one. Many times, Christian experience situations where the devil attacks us and tempts us, each of us individually, one-on-one. -on -one. We have to understand something here. When I 
uh, uh, would counsel people. I, I always go to Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Where there's division, and especially in the church with the body of believers and so forth. It's not against the individuals. It's Satan at work that tries to cause division in the church. It's the enemy that's working. Like that's what, that's what Paul's saying here. It's not against flesh and blood. So many times somebody says something or we, you have a disagreement with something. What goes on here is God, Satan wants to work in that and cause division. This is where you get, I'm leaving the church. I don't like the way so-and-so is talking to me and I don't have to put up with that and I'm going elsewhere. And I'm here to tell you, you'll never find a perfect church. Amen. If you do, then you better leave because for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 So, the key thing is through the Holy Spirit to work out the situation, to unite as brothers and sisters because the lost are watching. And if they see the lost acting just like we are, what do they see? There's no difference. That's why Paul's saying it's not against flesh and blood. It's against rulers in high places. It's spiritual wickedness. It's the devil. It's the enemy. Things that we cannot see, but there's a war going on. Right now, as we're sitting here, there's a spiritual war going on. Yeah. Right now. <coughs> Some are listening. Some are the devil's working. What do you got to do and many times the devil could be working on your mind right now. What, what you got to do when you leave here today? Other than staying focused on what God's trying to tell you, the enemy could be working on, well, I got this to do, I got that to do. So you're not focusing on what God's telling you. Amen. The devil attacks us individually. We have to realize Satan is real. One, one of Satan's tactics is to convince people that he does not exist. And that's so true. Yeah. Satan wants to make people think he doesn't exist. Yeah. Especially lost. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, it was read this morning, says the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they will not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. Hear that? The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. They're blind. They have scales on their eyes, just like Paul did before the resurrected Christ delivered him. So there's the loss out there with scales on their eyes, and they're blinded by the truth. <coughs> they're blinded by the truth. They don't even believe in God, although the Bible says they know He exists from creation of the world. <coughs> Satan tries to convince them that God doesn't exist. Satan tries to convince them that He doesn't exist. With this deception, the devil can easily execute his strategy of destruction. Although the Lord allows Satan to bring adversity, the Holy Spirit can enable us to walk through it in victory as we trust him. What's it saying, James? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. James tells us because these trials grow us up. These trials make us depend on Him. And when we depend on Him, we grow more spiritually in our walk with Him. <clears throat> I hear, why do God's people give in to temptation? Why do we give in to temptation? First of all, everyone, because still, we battle the sin nature. We battle sin nature. You know, there used to be a commercial out years ago with the good angel on the shoulders of an individual. The good angel on one side and the bad angel on the other side. Well, there's some truth to that. 
and we battle the sin nature, walk in the spirit, and will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. But walking in the spirit is a moment by moment experience. And many times in this life, everyone, we walk mostly, excuse me, not in the spirit. We walk in the flesh. We walk by the circumstance. And God doesn't want us walking by the circumstances. See, our Lord looks at the whole picture. We look at the right now. We don't see the whole picture. As children of God, we are indwelled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are believers still sometimes defeated in spiritual warfare? As I just said, first of all, because we battle the sin nature. Secondly, ignorance of the battle. Many Christians aren't even aware there's a war going on. That's interesting. Many Christians are not aware. Somebody comes up, says something cross to them, something goes on, they take it personal. They don't understand it's spiritual. And many Christians aren't even aware that there's a spiritual battle going on because we live by visual, what we can see, but the battle is what we cannot see. And if the, if the devil can keep you all against someone, if the devil can keep you out of worship service, if the devil can keep you down, he feels he's taking the victory. He'll put it in your mind. Well, you know, I've been going to worship for the last couple of weeks. I'm not feeling real good. I've been there most of the time. I could take a mess. I could take a mess this week. I, I've been going pretty regularly. Okay. If you're ill, that's a different story. <clears throat> but do not go by your feelings. Don't go by your feelings. That's how the devil works. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. Where would we be if Jesus did, felt like going to that cross, which he didn't, but he was obedient and went? So ignorant to the battle, don't even realize there's a war going on. Number two, even Christians are in denial of Satan's existence. The devil is real. Jesus battled with the devil. How did he combat the devil? He combated the devil through the word of God. Jesus talked to him in the wilderness. <coughs> Jesus, Jesus can't stay out demons. Taught about the devil's schemes. Christ would have not spoke of adversity if it didn't exist. It really does exist. There's an enemy out there. And I'm here to tell you something. If you have a desire to walk with the Lord and do his calling, the devil's got a bullseye on your back. His main word thing is, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to discourage you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put you down now. And you will not talk about your God. And I will stop it. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Then there's lack of training. It's not enough to be saved. Scripture calls us to suffer hardship as a good soldier. We are to suffer for the Lord as a good soldier. We should not be entangled with the affairs of this world, as the Scripture tells us. We should be about our Father's business. Remember like I always share with you. If you're here today and you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you're on a mission. You're a missionary. <clears throat> and you need to understand and have faith and to learn about the weapons of spiritual warfare. As it says right here in Scripture. Let me turn here for a moment. <clears throat> 
Verse 14, stand therefore having girded on your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have the truth. We are righteous. You are righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let the devil say, you're not good enough to do this. Who are you to share with, the, with somebody? Look what you did. Well, look what... If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You are righteous through the blood of Jesus. Don't let Satan tell you otherwise. having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. In other words, the Roman shoulders had spikes on their feet so when they walked, they would have firm footing. We need to be firm in our walk with God. Stand firm in the truth. And above all, the shield of faith. Having faith. To quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, which is the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And the word of God and the helmet. Do not be conformed to this world, but renew your mind by walking in the ways of God. Spiritual warfare. Well, you need to know who you are in Jesus Christ. You are a saint. You are loved by the living God. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You are righteous. You have the truth through Jesus Christ. Next I have here, the devil's propaganda. Satan seeks to steal God's glory and disrupt his kingdom. The devil is the one who always is lying to us about what, what will satisfy us. The devil wants to keep us Occupied with the cares of this world and make the pleasure of this world and the possessions so attractive, the things of this world so attractive to lure us away from our devotion to God. He wants to keep us sidetracked with the cares and all the things of this world. That's his goal. What's more important to you than the Lord? He wants to make the things of this world more attractive. So that he lures us away from our devotion to God. This happens to many Christians. They get more sidetracked. You know, well, I don't need to go to Bible study. I got this going on. Up again. I don't need to go to worship service. I got this to going on. What's more important than, the, than God? This world is temporary. Do not be consumed with it. That's another one of Satan's game plays. He wants to consume you with this world. The pleasures of this world. Remember, it's temporary. It's not lasting. I just seen last week, you might have seen it. I love listening to him. Charles Stanley went home to be with the Lord. I've been watching him for years. My father-in-law loved listening to him. When we first got saved, the angel myself would listen. I even went to Hershey and saw him in person. I had my picture taken with him. 90 years old. And I know when he stepped into heaven, the Lord said to him, Come in, my servant. Fine and faithful servant. Job well done. Come into my kingdom. He walked into a beautiful heaven. Spiritual landmines. God's people sometimes feel to realize the danger zones that they will face. Certain sins are like landmines. They take us by surprise and cause us great damage. The devil says just a little... Just a little won't hurt. Just one time. And they develop, then you develop habits. And you make 
decisions that can be destroying your life. God's people give in to temptation when inadequate biblical instructions. Just as I'm sharing this morning here as I move through this, we're called to come to Sunday morning services here. Worship. But it's also a time of learning. Sermons teach us principles to face the battles victoriously. Not attending church won't cause us to lose our salvation, but spiritual knowledge and gathering will with other Christians are, is important in preparing us for spiritual warfare. This is so critical to come out the Sunday morning. We pray for one another. We unite as a family. I thank you for the prayers today. That's what it's all about. We're a family. We must assume responsibility for our sin. Sometimes people joke, the devil made me do it. You hear that? The devil can't make you do anything. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. Just as I'm about to read the next one. Believers have the strength of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. None of us can match Satan in our own strength. He's been deceiving people for many, many years. Our responsibility is not to fight the devil, but to be strong in the power of the Lord. Draw to God. Resist the devil and he shall leave. You can resist him through the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> In Ephesians, I just want to read Ephesians 1, 18 to 20 for a minute. Sorry, finish here this morning. Ephesians chapter 1. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory of his inheritance, was the, is the exceeding greatness of his power towards you, towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. In other words, God's mighty power, which is strong enough to raise Jesus from the dead, bring him back to life, can work in and through us. That same power that raised Christ lives in us. Thank you, Jesus. Do we really realize that? We have the Christ, we have Jesus' power. Amen. These earthly bodies are passing away, but we have the Holy Spirit. You listen to me, everyone. We have the Spirit renewing every day. These bodies may grow old and grow weak, but we grow more in the likeness of Christ as we walk with Him. Just that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. We have the authority of God. I have this written here. A police officer directs traffic and has the authority of the government to do what he does. We have the authority from God the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to resist the devil. We can say, Satan, leave in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be gone. And Satan does not like to hear Jesus. We can cast him out. Thank you, Jesus. As believers, we can stand strong and watch God fight our battles. We do not fight the battle. God fights the battle. We can't. We will lose. You are not strong enough. That's why we need the armor. Stand back and see the salvation of the good Lord. God doesn't call us to fight the devil. We are to be strong with the Lord and watch the miracle unfold. You hear that? Be strong in the Lord and watch the miracle unfold. We need to meditate on the truth 
that God doesn't expect us to fight our own spiritual battle. As I close, the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. We are not strong enough. As I close, are you here today? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? If you do, His Spirit lives in you. You have to know Him personally. Not enough just to come out to services. Not enough to come week after week. Not enough to just give. Not enough to just help. One day all of us are going to step in to eternity. And the Lord's going to say, why should I let you into my heaven? And you cannot say, I've been God went to church for 50 years. I gave. I did all the things. Hear what you're saying? I. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. What he did for you. It's about him. Only thing you can say. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I realized that he died and went to a cross. He died for me on that cross. Amen. And he rose again. And I accepted him as my Lord and my Savior. And I know that his Holy Spirit came and lived inside of me and I accept him as my Lord. <coughs> and the Lord will say, come into my kingdom. But if you have to say any other thing, he'll say, be gone, I never knew you. That's what the world will say. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but about a personal relationship, walking with Jesus, moment by moment by moment, relying and depending on him. That's the way to the kingdom. And one day, You'll walk in and you'll say, well done, my friend and faithful servants. I have rewards for you. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to close the word of prayer and I'm going to come down. And if anybody would like to come to the altar and pray, please take that time. If you're saved, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And if you have a need, come down. Don't feel embarrassed to come down. Let the Lord work in your life. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Amen. It's humbleness. We must decrease so He can increase. That's what it's all about. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you today for the word you have given me. Father God, may we walk in your ways. And I pray if there be one here who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, today would be that day. And I pray for all those that do. If they have any prayers, any concerns, may they come to the altar humbly, giving it to you. Father, I thank you for the privilege and the honor to be called by you to share your word. And Father God, I thank you for the love of the body of believers here. May we walk with you. And thank you for your love and your mercy. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.